In this documentary series, we've been granted unprecedented access by some of Australia's leading thoroughbred stud farms to document their foal's journey from birth through to becoming a racehorse. We will be documenting the formative stages of a select group of foals and their dams with the people involved who raise, care and educate our racehorses. You will witness the precious early stages of a foal's life as they take their first breath, first steps, and their development over an 18-month period to becoming a thoroughbred racehorse. We then follow their development over an 18-month period as they are educated and transform from a new life to racehorse. In this episode, we return to the Hunter Valley of Australia to see how the Written Tycoon total attraction cult has matured at Sejano Stud. Plus, we welcome a new horse to the series, a colt who is exceptionally well-bred and carries the well-known brand of Torryburn Stud. In October of 2021, we welcomed into the world a chestnut colt by Ritten Tycoon out of the mare Total Attraction at Sejano Stud. In episode one of the Paddock to Post series, we witnessed the colt as he took his first breaths, those first steps, and documented the first four days of his life under the care of Peter O'Brien and his team at Sejano Stud. It is now 2022, eight months since we last saw the cult as a newborn foal. We caught up with the farm's assistant yearling manager, Vicky Hagar, as she conducts her morning checks, and we ask how the total attraction cult has progressed into a weanling. Buddy, what's up? Uh, this is the total attraction written tycoon colt. Um, so he'll be nine months old. Um, so he's out in a paddock with ten other colts. Um, they have an older gelding out with them as well, a nanny. So he, they just look after the after the weanlands. Um, so from the foaling unit, they'll go over. We've got an area of the farm called Balmoral. Um, the foals will go over there at about two weeks old. Um, they go out into big paddocks with the mares. There'll be about 10 of them in each paddock. Um, from there, at about six months-ish, they'll get weaned. So they'll come into a barn. Um, we have a bloke that does a very good job. He'll handle all the foals and he'll help them progress into weanlands, give them a bit of confidence and get them walking and being used to being without their mums. 
Um, and then from there, they'll come out into paddocks. They'll start off in a bit smaller, flatter paddocks. Um, and then from there, when they get a little bit older, they'll come up into these big, bigger paddocks up at the Yellen farm. Oh, it just gets them socializing and they have time to play and um, yeah, just generally be a horse, it helps them grow and strengthen and progress into beautiful racehorses. Sejinho's stud foaled down around 100 mares in 2021. Over 90% of the foals raised on the farm will be offered for sale at the 2023 yearling sales in Australia and New Zealand, or retained by their owners to race. But how do you raise and educate a young thoroughbred? Um, yeah, so he'd be about about four times the size of he was when he was newborn. Um, probably put on, give or take, about 300 kilos. Um, so at the minute, they just stay out here. We'll, we'll come out and we'll feed them all in the mornings. Um, we check them. We make sure that they're all sound and that they're good and, you know, well and that nothing's wrong with them. Give them a bit of a pat because a lot of the time they'll love that. Um, we love that as well. <laughs> um, and then they'll just stay out here during the day, give some time to have a bit of a play and, you know, they love chasing each other around the paddock and they'll play and then they'll, they usually have a nap post breakfast, bellies full and they'll all lie down together and just have a chill out for a bit. Um, then we'll come out and we'll check them again in the afternoons. Just again, make sure that they're all happy and well and everything's correct with them. Oh, so they obviously have beautiful grass in here. So it helps them grow, helps them develop, you know, put on more, more condition and they'll get assessed every month. So Peter and Brian will come and have a look at them, make sure they're growing. Once they've kind of eaten a lot of the grass in here, we'll move them to a fresh paddock. Um, and then this paddock will have a bit of a break and let the grass come back again. And then we might move one of the other mobs back into here if they're going to go to the yearling sales and they'll come in to the barn um, for the first sale of the year they'll sort of come in well beginning of november-ish um, but yeah until then they'll stay out here really We'll return to Sejinho in the next few weeks as the auction houses Magic Millions and William Inglis are on farm to assess the yearlings for the 2023 sales season. We depart Sejinho stud to welcome a new colt to the series, born 120 kilometres away at Torryburn stud. Torryburn stud is nestled in the gentle rolling hills near Gresford, New South Wales, in the beautiful Patterson Valley, and was first settled in 1821. Torryburn was acquired by John Cornish and family in 2002. The family immediately embarked on an extensive program adding to and improving the existing horse breeding infrastructure, with the aim of further building the venture as a solely professional stud. Two adjoining properties were also acquired, as well as a substantial frontage to the magnificent Allen River. The farm has an extensive roll call of elite racehorses who carry the Torryburn Stud brand, including the Hong Kong Group 1 winner, Hot King Prawn. The Group 2 Theo Marx winner, Deploy. The Group 1 Coolmore Classic winner, Dixie Blossoms. Group 1 Sires Produce winner, El Dorado Dreaming. And Home Affairs, winner of the Group 1 Coolmore Stud Stakes and Lightning Stakes at Flemington. <whistles> Torryburn 
Torrie Burns' assistant stud manager George Sexton explains how the farm prepares a young thoroughbred to become a racehorse. Uh, we're just out here with the capitalist, the Hool Colt and all his mates. Every afternoon, every morning, they get fed twice a day, come out and check them, give them a good check over all their body and everything. Earlier on, they were in for um, their regular farrier trim. They come in every four to five weeks. We'll um, walk them all up and down, give them a good once over, check them for confirmation, see how they're going and any adjustments we need to make in their feed or the farrier checks them to see what he needs to do going forward in the future. And yeah, it's just a good education for them and they get used to being caught and brought in. As you can see, they're all very friendly. And um, it's just good for us to see them in a different light and they're all very happy horses. It's been very wet at the minute, but they're all growing out really well and this guy's a bit of a star, he loves the attention. He knows he's pretty special, his sister being Espiona. And yeah, he's an exciting horse for the future. The good ones tend to know they're very special and he's no different. Uh, yeah, so they come in every four to five weeks, as I said. They it's more for like the structural. If you don't do their feet, it can cause long-term problems for them going forward. Maybe not immediately, but in a good few years time, we just bring them in every five weeks and make sure they're going the right way. They have no issues, nothing we need to address and keep them healthy, keep their feet healthy and give them the best stand in their career going forward. Obviously we can't, we don't have enough paddocks to put them all singular and it's not good for them. It's like people, you need to socialise, you need to learn how to be in groups and this, with the horses, it teaches them that competitiveness. You can see them all out here playing, running and racing each other and that. And then yeah, when they do go to the track, they learn, you know, that competitive edge and the spirit to win. And we just find, yeah, they treat them naturally as you can. If they're out in the wild, they'd all be all together. So yeah, we just try do things pretty simple and it's been very effective. This colt is being educated and prepared to be presented for sale at a 2023 Australian yearling sale. This bay colt is by the Group 1 producing stallion capitalist, sire of the Group 1 champagne stakes winner Captivant. He's also the sire of the stakes winners Marine 1, Sebenak, Kalishnikov, Cannonball and Profiteer, as just a few on his impressive progeny list. The colt has incredible black type depth in his pedigree. This damned Ahul is full sister to the Group 2 placed Bonnie O'Reilly and three-quarter sister to Rare Insight, who is the dam of the Group 1 winner, Steps in Time. This capitalist cult is half-brother to the talented Chris Waller-trained filly, Espiona, winner of the Group 3 James Carr stakes at Ramwick by nearly five lengths and regarded by many as one of Australia's most exciting horses in training. Well-related filly coming forward from Torrey Burn. Pretty to see, of course. Now full bowl black tight. Espiona was purchased for $190,000 at the 2020 Magic Millions yearling sale on the Gold Coast by Denise Martin of Star Thoroughbreds. 
to start thoroughbreds. Congratulations, 190 the money. Espiona's dam, Dahu, was lightly raced with five starts for one win at Warwick Farm for Chris Waller. Yeah, the hill, she was a beautiful mare. Um, unfortunately, she only had the two folds. Um, this fella, who's a beautiful colt, and one filly, um, Espiona, by the all-conquering extreme choice. She looks like she's a future Group 1 winner, um, and we're very lucky to have this colt here. Uh, the hill, she, she didn't cost the world, but she's been a great mare in terms of her family just ex completely exploded with Bonnie O'Reilly and all that really good family there. So we're excited for the future for this cult, whatever, wherever he may end up. Sadly, the mayor Dahul died, having only two foals on the ground. The loss of any horse has a profound impact on those who care for them. Oh, it's a mass, massive effect, like, because we're up here, you know, in the middle of the night, falling down those mares or dealing with them when they are sick or whatever it may be, or out in the rain and the cold. Like, this morning wasn't very nice out here. It was very cold, and luckily the rain has stopped now, but it's been a wet season, so everyone puts so much into them, um, so much effort into them. So when we lose a mare or any sort of horse on the farm, it's like losing someone in your family, really. It, it's heartbreaking for everyone, and because we have such a close-knit team, uh, everyone feels it, and yeah, it's a, it's a huge loss, and you can't really replace them, unfortunately. Tori Bernstad has a lot to be proud of, but what are the highlights for George and the team? Uh, the best part, I think, about my job, definitely, you know, you get the sales, you get the joy of it. We had a great year uh, on and off the track, seeing the likes of Home Affairs and everything going to Royal Ascot, seeing them on the plane. It's just incredible to think there's a horse on a plane going for a Group 1 that we bred on this farm. That's so exciting, but this is my favourite time of the year because you see the next generation coming through. It's a bit slower paced, the sales season is finished you're coming up to the breeding season so you can take your time with them and we you can bring the horses in and handle them and really get to know their personalities and that's my favorite part about it getting to know the horse as an individual in episode three we'll follow the auction houses of magic millions and william inglis as they assess yearlings across the Hunter Valley who are nominated for their sales in 2023.